Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com and today we're going to be looking at the Ant E-Carry. What we're going to do is we're going to take it all a little apart, just enough to adjust and tweak everything, and then we're going to kind of look at it and go back and forth and figure out what we need to do to tweak it to get it to be printing at its best quality. So along at the end of this video we're going to be tearing it apart a little further than you need to to just tighten everything down. But in general, this video is just going to be me fixing this at eCarry because what happened to me was I got it in the box from GearBest and it was mm, kind of falling apart. I don't know, maybe the manufacturer didn't tighten everything and uh, quite as well as they could have and shipping this thing from really far away, who knows what happened along the way. So let's get started. Welcome to the bench. So here's the tools you're going to need. You're basically going to need a set of metric Allen wrenches. I happen to have four of them here that I've been using continuously. Two, 2.5, 3, and 4. There might be some other ones on here, but those are the ones that I've been using. You might need a Phillips head screwdriver, but most of this stuff is all hex screws here. So, socket head cap screws or pan head cap screws. So the first thing we're going to do is check the axes. So in my case, this linear section here was very, very loose. And the belts were very, very loose. And the motor here, or the slide rail was very loose. This rail was actually okay. And the slide rails down here were very loose. And the belts inside here were very loose. So I'm just going to go through each one, tighten them, and show you how to do that. A word of caution before we get started. Anytime you rotate one of these motors or move one of the axes, you are going to be powering the board. So you want to be very careful when you actually do that. You don't want to be forcefully moving everything fast because you will possibly damage the system. Uh, one way to achieve not damaging, damaging the system, of course, making sure everything is unplugged and then you can even unplug the motors in this case, I can get to the x-axis axis motor here, and I can pull it off, and now when I move this, it will not be feeding back into the system. So keep that in mind. you got to use a little bit of caution here. Just to make this easier, we're going to go ahead and remove this top plate. Now, you don't have to do this, but I find it helpful if you do that. We need to take off this cover and disconnect this cable so we don't rip it. So in my case, uh, this cover was already sort of coming apart, um, and the two screws that hold it together were completely missing. Um, with that said, I haven't really been able to get screws to fit this quite right. I don't think this is mounted on here um, exactly correct, because I think these screws are supposed to screw into the motor, and they don't quite fit. Something's not quite aligned, or I've got the wrong screws. So you may have the right screws. You're going to have to just take those out of here and I'll show you how to take this cable out so you know how to do it. These two tabs or this black this brown tab gets pulled out like that and then you can slide the ribbon cable out. Okay, You want to be very careful with this ribbon cable because you can damage it. Um, I was able to just slip it out of here like this carefully and continue working on this. Okay, with this uh, freely moving so we can pull it out of this slot, there are one, two, three, four, five, six screws around the base of this. So let's go ahead and take those off. All right, with those disconnected, we can go ahead and slip this acrylic piece off slide the cable through just to make sure we don't uh, get it caught on anything. And we can set this acrylic piece aside. I've got my screws in the uh, bin here so I don't lose them. Just using this as a screw holder. Now we can access the inside. Now one thing to note is in these channels right here are some T-nuts. So you can see the T-nuts that sit right here. Now these actually come out Okay, so you're going to want to take them out because if you don't take them out, you may actually lose them. So that's how I'm taking them out. Very simple to take out. And set them aside so you don't lose them. The other screws here are 
acrylic in the got a brass insert in the acrylic so you don't have to worry about those okay so with the cover off we can uh, expose everything here I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the the motor okay so just unplug the motor here so you can make sure you don't have to worry about uh, feeding back into the system do is you want to tighten this pulley and you want to do that before you tighten the belt so there are two screws set screws on this pulley what you just want to make sure is that you actually have the pulley lined up with the rest of the system so you can see how you can move this so what I did is just move this all the way down when you move this all the way down you can see that the the belt is it, it indeed lined up with that pulley you don't want it rubbing the edge and you're gonna to want to check the belt alright so this is on this side and the, the way you're going to actually tighten that is if you set this guy carefully, set this guy on the back, okay, then you can get to these two screws. And those two screws are the belt. All right. It's pretty easy. Contrast black on here is kind of hard to see, so you have to bear with me on the footage. So these two bolts right here, you're just going to go ahead and loosen those a tiny little bit. You don't need much, just like that. Here it is from the other side. And it actually is not very straight. So you can see how this, uh, you can see how this belt tensioner moves and it wobbles a little bit. So what I did is just got down in here, made sure it was pulled tight, and then tighten it down on the other side. Tightening this belt is a bit tricky, so to make it a little easier, what I'm doing is I'm overhanging it off the edge of the table here, so I can go ahead and get one of the screws ready to be tightened, and I can align it the best I can, pull it tight with my two fingers, and then tighten the uh, two screws down. Don't worry about pulling it too tight, I think it's better to be almost too tight because it's really hard to get that tight. All right, the next thing we're going to check for is play in uh, in this plate right here. You can see how it moves a lot. Okay, I'm sure you can see that, but I'll get you closer so you can see how much this, this moves. Now, if I move it down here, it doesn't move quite as much. These two rails, okay, you don't have to take this plate apart because these are drilled precisely you can't make any adjustments there what you need to adjust are actually these two slide rails so we're gonna go ahead and flip this thing to its back okay like this and if you look on the bottom I know these are hard to see on the contrast but there are three screws or well, two here on this one and then there's three screws here so what you're gonna do is just make sure uh, these are tight. These are the motor, the motor plate. Okay, so make sure those are good and tight. All right, that's that's what's holding the motor on. Uh, and then this one here, just make sure these two are tight. All right, and then this one. Okay, what I'm going to do is slide the glass plate up. All right, you can see it sticking out of the out of the top there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull. Okay, this, loosen it up and pull it out a little bit. Okay, now it's tight. Now I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm also going to pull it out, all right, with my hand behind the piece here. Pull it out, tighten it down. All right, and the same thing with this guy. And just pull it out. It should be already out because we've already tightened the ends. Now we're going to flip this back over and just check it, make sure it's uh, nice and tight. Still got a tiny bit of play on this side. This side feels really, really tight. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this one and try to pull it back. All of this is, you know, machined, laser cut or whatever. So now I'm going to find the right Allen wrench, of course. Alright, I'm going to loosen that one, 
I'm going to loosen this one. I'm going to push it that way. Okay. Tighten that one. Tighten that one. So now what we've done is we've moved those rails, you know, apart, forcing the wheels on the bottom of that tray to hit them. So let's just see what it feels like. Still got a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and try to adjust this one out a tiny bit more. All right. A little bit more adjustment. Now it's pretty well steady. You can see it... Uh, at any position it doesn't rock. You should check it on this side, check it on this side, check it in the middle. So now you can go ahead and plug your motor back in. Make sure that uh, you don't mess up any of the prongs on there. Now you gotta be careful when you move it. So that's the bottom. Let's move on to the top. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna go ahead and adjust the x-axis here. So down at the bottom, all right, there are two screws that go in here and two screws that go into the motor. So you're just going to want to go ahead and tighten everything. Make sure it's tight. There and the ones that go into the rail. Mine all feel perfectly tight. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten all the screws here on the coupler. Oh, mine are a little loose on this uh, Allen wrench. Use this side. You don't need to over tighten this stuff but making sure it's tight will be beneficial in the long run. Okay so tightened all these four screws. Now down in the bottom okay you can go ahead and unplug that that wire connector. That one's going to be a a bit tricky to get plugged back in but I think it's wise to unplug it because what we're going to do is spin this and actually take the whole top off. So also on the z-axis on the bottom here you can go ahead and tighten anything you can reach here which is actually what attaches the z-rail. Um, make sure these are all tightened and then you, from the inside you can also get a few more screws. Just go through all the screws make sure they're adequately tight. Don't over tighten them but adequately tight. Okay so we got that adjusted down there once again just go through all the the screws everywhere you find a screw Go ahead and give it a, a tighten. So these go into the brass Z coupling here. Now we're going to go ahead and take this whole thing off the top because we want to get to these screws that we can't reach. So we're going to go ahead and take these top bolts off. So there are two screws that go into the ends and these are pretty tight. So you're going to have to loosen them first and then you can stick the allen wrench through the whoa through the top okay so we can take the handle off just like that put that aside now we can take this whole thing off the top so what I want to do is actually with the motor unplugged okay I want to go ahead and just unscrew this thing and we're gonna basically take it all the way off. If you don't undo the motor, when you spin this, you could damage the controller, so just make sure you take it off. Be careful not to uh, to break the coupling here. With this floating freely, you could very easily bend or break this coupling. So now we've got the gantry off. Let's get a little better close-up of it so we can work on it. All right, well, with the rest of the system out of the way, now we can really see what we got here. Now, because this is unplugged from the cable that we did originally. It's not too important to worry about feedback from these motors. So now you can, you know, freely move this and there's no feedback. Um, you can unplug it if you want, but there's no real need to do that. So the first thing we need to do is actually adjust this rail right here. So there are... Man, this black on white on black is hard to see, but... Uh, inside there... There we go. There are two screws, one here and one here. You're going to want to try to make sure this is as straight as it can be. It would be helpful if it is parallel with the rest of the system. So if you loosen these, push everything up to the top, then tighten them down. You can get to them with a angled Allen wrench. You can get to them inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up. 
So you can see what it looks like when it's loose. You can see that that whole uh, that whole arm is moving loose. So what you're going to want to do is pull it up or push it down, it doesn't really matter which way you go, and then tighten these two screws so that it's equal with the plate which should be pretty well good. So the plate should be pretty well, you know, the hole should be pretty well cut square with the plate. So. There you go. Looks like I got some grease all over my hand from the Z motor uh, bushing or lead screw. Okay, so once you've tightened that, that's really the only screw. You know, it's it's in behind here, and you can't get to it with it on the the rest of the system. So once you got that tight tightened, you can we can go ahead and assemble this back on the the rest of it. It's easier to work on, I think, while it's on there. Now we've got that on, make sure we plug the motor back in so we don't forget. This one's a bit tricky to get to. I'm going to use a pair of needle nose to get it lined up. And then I can push it in with my finger. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at this motor. We need to adjust the pulley and make sure it's lined up correctly and then tighten the screws on the motor. So as you can see there are uh, two screws here. Just go ahead and make sure those are tight. And the other two screws actually are supposed to go here which hold the cover on. So you can make sure this is aligned up before you tighten all this down. So what you want to do is make sure that the belt, when you look down the channel, make sure that the belt fits down the channel. I'll show you what I'm seeing on my side. Alright, so you can see how the belt goes down the channel there. Alright, you're going to want to make sure it is lined up. You don't want the belt hitting the uh, the channel. Okay, so you want to make sure that it goes through the channel. These two screws on the pulley, just loosen those and adjust this left to right and make sure it's lined up so it's not rubbing the channel. Alright, so let's go ahead and finish this arm. So you're going to want to take this screw off right here because we're going to be checking the belt now. So let me get you a close up of this. So as you can see this is what the belt tensioner looks like. On this side there's uh, these two screws are missing. The, we've only got one. And then on the other side there's two screws but in the exact same location. So this belt is already pretty tight. So we're going to go ahead and loosen this up one turn. Same thing on this side. I'll go ahead and loosen it up so I can show you. Okay, so this, this slides in order to tighten the belt. Okay, so the best way to get this tight, from my opinion, and this, by the way, might be a little loose on the end, but it's okay because of how this works. So you want to take your Allen key, and you're going to actually put it in the set screw on this side. You can't see it. Get it where it's just almost tight. Okay, then pull it out. So I'm pushing this way towards me and then tighten it down. You don't have to get it real tight. Okay, once you get that pretty well tight, you're going to do the same thing to this side. Pull it out. It's got to be just about tight right there. Okay, and you're going to pull it toward you while you tighten it. Now the belt is pretty tight. Just make sure all the set screws are tightened down and you're good to go. This end is a little loose and I think it should be the way that these bearings are sitting on here. There really should be some washers here but there's not so you get what you get for this one. You could add some, it'd probably be smart. put the cover back on pretty easy so now let's go back to the motor and look at it 
All right, now that we've gotten that belt tensioned correctly here, we need to make sure these four rollers are actually against this rail best as possible. So this is actually one solid piece of aluminum. You can't really adjust anything. So the only thing you can do here is loosen up these rollers. All right, and you can see how how they have some some movement in them. So you just want to push the two together, okay, with your fingers one on each side and then tighten this thing down. All right, then the same thing with the back. You just want to loosen them and make sure you push them together and tighten them down. Make sure they still roll free and then you can grab the whole thing and twist it this way and just make sure it doesn't move. So if things feel too tight or too loose, you can try switching some of these rollers around and it might potentially make a difference or if you flip them around. I just did that and it seems very, very tight, too tight in my opinion to when it goes forward and backward. Because there's no adjustments here, it just relies on the way it's uh, machined. So a little bit of tiny, tiny tolerances there. All right, a simple way I'm finding out to just making sure you've got these tensioned correctly so that there's no play but it's not too tight. If you grab the head and you move it, if you're able to move the whole printer like this, then you've got it too tight. You should be able to move this freely without too much tension. Mine feels a tiny bit too tight, but I'm gonna go with it. Should be okay. So the only other tensioners, you know, or, or adjustments you need to probably worry about is these rollers in here. Now I haven't had any troubles but you can loosen them and you can push them together the same way you did on these and get them to to tighten up. But for the most part I haven't had any problems with that. When it's all said and done you basically should, shouldn't be able to uh, really move much around. This whole piece moves a little bit but in general everything should be pretty steady. And that's really uh, you know all you need to worry about on this machine. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the only other adjustment is, uh, of course, the tensioner on the hobbed gear here. All right, so after you got all that complete, um, you really just can comb over all the screws and make sure they, they look tight, the belts, check them again, just feel them with your hand, you know, make sure everything looks fine. Um, again, kind of tweak everything and make sure it feels good in all the positions, and really, that's it. Um, there isn't too much more to adjust on this machine. That's pretty well all of it go over all the little screws a little at a time just make sure they're all tightened but yeah we can basically just uh, put everything back together and see how it runs all right guys so i went ahead and pulled the electronic circuit board out i wanted to see what this thing looks like so let's take a closer look at the top side of this board you can see it does have a uh, omega 256 controller on it and i was wondering about a heated bed so it looks like this MOSFET right here is actually this guy. So we got a big old MOSFET for the bed we can use and then the other three, um, one is for the fan, one is for one heater and one is for the other heater. So bed, fan, heater and heater. So it looks like you could put a dual setup on here. Um, of course the plugs and driver plugs are missing but it does have the capacitor so I presume that if you add the headers on there you should be able to plug in a second extruder which would be kinda cool to have on this little machine pretty small for that but you know if you did want to heat it bad you could do that like I said in my other review video this is acrylic so you'd want to do something different maybe machine a piece of aluminium and put your heated element right on that or something but you're gonna have to figure that out yeah, it's not a bad little board to be honest with you. Alright, so when you're putting this back together, don't forget to put your uh, little uh, nuts in there
I want to put them so that the little ridges face up because what happens is they turn and that is actually how they lock. What you want to do is just get them started don't tighten them all the way get them started and then once you get everything set you can line it up and tighten it but these screws do nothing for you as far as support or structure so don't over tighten them you'll you'll break the acrylic then we gotta put this back together so putting this cable on is the exact reverse just pop open the connector make sure that the shiny pins are facing towards the circuit board push it in there and lightly push that back on and then again if you had the two screws you can put them on there unfortunately I do not but that's okay make sure you've got all your cords plugged in let's plug it in and make sure it still works so my first modification before I turn this on and get it to work I don't like how this glass is clear you can see right onto the black the black makes it very hard to see in my opinion so what I'm going to do is take this plate off. I'm going to put a piece of paper behind here and put it back together. All right, well, for me, I actually like that a lot better. I like to be able to see what's going on. I think actually the black would be easier to see the glue stick because you can't really see the glue stick going on but uh, that's okay I like to be able to see what's happening with my print because I use my camera on here a lot so black on black just doesn't work very well yeah perfect let's try printing something so we got one more thing on our list when I got this it was bent really far so we're going to actually just take uh, this apart, we're going to peel off the paper so it's actually nice and black and shiny, uh, bend those brackets out so it's out further like this, put it back together. Cool! Now, it'll just be spinning all the time getting dust all over it, but at least it's straight. Much better. Let's go ahead and uh, try to print something now. Alright guys, so hopefully that was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments on this particular machine or you want me to see me do something, uh, eventually I'm sure I'll be adding a heated bed. I may try it with the acrylic plate anyway, just see what happens, but I imagine that acrylic plate's going to get real soft, even at lower temperatures, I, I think it will. So, we'll see what happens. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, thumbs up, thumbs down, and I'll see you later. Bye.